Hey guys, Quinn here. I just wanted to show you a quick technique to use Luminosity Mask for uh, sharpening your images just locally and not globally. <laughs> Luminosity masks are a great way to apply something to just a part of the image that has a certain luminosity value. Uh, for example, only your highlights, only your shadows, or only your midtones, and you can even restrain it the more. So what we are going to do in this example is add a bit more sharpening to our highlights so that we've got something that is slightly more real and has a more 3D effect. So we are going to start right away by creating a global sharpening that we will then mask away. So to do that, we are going to go into a layer uh, and merge visible while pressing Alt or Option. If we've got more than just one layer, if just like me, you've got only your background, you can just press Command or, uh, Command or Control J uh, twice to get two layers. The base of the technique is pretty much similar to what you would do for frequency separation. So one is blur and the other one is sharpening or texture. So the blur, we are going to activate it while disabling sharpening and go to filter and then blur under uh, surface blur. Now, if you have got an image that is 16-bit, it might be really slow. So uh, a good idea is to find your radius and threshold in 8-bit and then going back to 16-bit uh, by cancelling your previous adjustment to 8-bit and just applying it. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to keep it as an image, otherwise it'd be just too slow. Um, so to find your radius, just push the threshold to the max so that you can see how much uh, blur you get. And what you want to do is blur uh, the area where you want to get more um, texture. Yeah, I know, pretty stupid, but uh, that's how it works. Uh, so just blur until you find something that blurs, for example, here, texture on the cheek, and that should be around about right. So then the, th the threshold should be pretty much in the same area. Uh, but what you want to do is get everything um, still blurry, or you want to get more of the sharpening, but keep the rest pretty much intact. So uh, you should have the edge around the head, uh, the edge around the lips. And you know, if you've got that, you should have a good th a threshold. So for example, if I go all the way down to, uh, let's say, 7, you see that the texture is starting to showing up. That means I'm too low. So I'm going back to 18, which I think was pretty good. Even 17 is great. I've got my uh, iris gray and uh, the edge for the head. So press OK. And then re-enable the sharpening layer. Uh, now, with the sharpening layer, we are going to go under image and apply image, just like for frequency separation, really. You want to use your blur layer as a source, um, a blending mode to subtract if you are in 8-bit mode or add if you are in 16-bit mode. But then again, the settings are the same as for frequency separation. The scale is 2 and 128 with invert unchecked for subtract. It's in 2 and 0 with invert activated for 16-bit. So as I said before, I'm in 8-bit mode, so subtract scale of 2, offset of 128, invert, unchecked, and I'm going to press OK. Now that I've got my sharpening, I'm going to choose a different blending mode for the layer. Uh, linear light is usually what you use for uh, frequency separation. If I, if I disable the two layers here, you see no difference. Now uh, what I can do is actually delete the blur because I've got all my texture in the sharpening layer and that add all texture to my base picture, which is great because we want more texture. But you can also change the linear light uh, blending mode to overlay if you want slightly less of, uh, of sharpening. Now uh, in overlay it's great, but sometimes if you screw up your uh, the first blur, you can even go to soft light so that you get something softer or you can keep it in linear light if you want something that is really strong. So for this picture, I'm going to use overlay as it seems to uh, do a pretty decent job. 
uh, I could even go to a linear light so that you see better on your uh, monitor because I guess with the compression on YouTube it might not be so great. You can always change uh, your opacity to get more or less effect uh, and what we are going to do now is actually mask the effect where we don't want it to be. So one way to do that would be to create a mask on it while pressing Alt or Option that, uh, that is going to blur everything out and just use a brush to paint wherever we want. But that is not very precise. Uh, another way to do it would be to use luminosity mask. So there are different ways to create a luminosity mask. One is using curve and then a calculation tool. Another one is using panel. Another one is using channels. And another one, which we are going to use right away, is using the select and uh, color range. So to use that, we are going to go back to our background and uh, click on select color range. So that gives us a nice uh, already feathered range. So fuzziness is just to um, create something that is slightly less or more refined of a selection. So for example, you get something smoother or harder on it for your selection. As you can see, if I zoom in, if I push the fuzziness all the way down, it's really harsh. If I push it all the way up, it's really smooth. So uh, just find one that feels right for you because if you select something that is too harsh, um, the sharpening is not going to look great because it's going to add some kind of weird uh, contrast between the tones. So just find something that is smooth and then find a range that will uh, just mask everything out except where you want your sharpening to appear. So for example, for my picture, uh, I think 220 should be about right. And I'm going to press OK. Now that I've got my selection active, I can just use my brush. Uh, I can even lower the opacity uh, or the flow of my brush and start brushing wherever I want to uh, make the adjustment visible. And that's about it. So we've added just uh, a bit of sharpening on the highlights and it should be visible now. So when you do something like that, be careful because uh, it can make everything that you didn't clean up before very visible. Uh, like here, I could it could use a bit more cleaning if I were to print it big. So that is before, that is after, and if I zoom in, that is after and before. So I hope that helps you and until next time, have a good day.